Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff, and welcome to our first review of 2024, and really the first long-form content of 2024 as well. We're taking a look at the Best Tech Slasher XL in today's video. I was going to be reviewing the Devo Knives Growler today. I was going to post the Devo Knives Growler review, um, but I'm not quite done with, <laughs> with that review. I'm still working on some, some things with that, and I have been carrying the snot out of this knife on the ranch over the past little bit and just really getting to know it and I really really like this thing spoiler alert so let's go ahead and get some blade length measurements done we're measuring just a sharpened edge here we're coming in in that three and a quarter inch range if we're measuring all the way back to scales we're more you know in that three and a half range so Definitely what I would consider to be a full-size EDC pocket knife. Let's go ahead and get our size comparisons out here. Open the size comparison drawer. Uh, and there we go. <laughs> here's our rat two. And here's our rat one. So yeah, like I said, full-size pocket knife. This is the uh, size range that I really prefer to carry. And so... There it is. All right, next up, let's get our Civivis. There's the Praxis. And here is our Elementum, or in this case, the Elementum 2. Let's bring out our USA made comparisons. The Bug Out and the PM2. Very similar in size to PM2 uh, and very Kind of similar in feeling in hand as well. Um, real quick, let's look a little bit here. Similar thickness. I think the, the slasher is just a hair thicker, but very similar in feeling to the PM2. And let's go ahead and compare against some classic Best Tech knives. Let's start off with the Swordfish, which by the way, they've got a Magna Cup version of the Swordfish now. And it's like super affordable and I don't have money for knives right now, but... If they're still available when I do, that might be my next <laughs> knife purchase because I love the swordfish. And the penguin, which both of these knives have been kind of sitting in my knife case. And, you know, this is the problem when you have too many knives. I know, woe is me. Um, I haven't carried these in a while. And, gosh, I forgot just how awesome the penguin is this is probably one of my favorite budget knives of all time so i might have to do an updated list on best budget knives of all time but there's our comparisons very very cool and let's go ahead and close these up with one more size comparison here is the um, best tech paladin which is another absolutely excellent knife i love best tech guys and i haven't reviewed enough of them i didn't review any in 2023 but yeah and then let's go ahead and compare against the cjrb resource just because they have Kind of similar color schemes, blue scales and the blacked out blade, which I really, really love. I made a video in 2023 about how I'm, you know, starting to love all blackout, blacked out knives. Blue with a black blade, that's kind of becoming my, uh, one of my new favorites. And by the way, the video, the review for this knife is going to be coming out next week. Definitely watch that. Make sure you watch that because, um, yeah, this knife and I have been on quite the journey. All right, so... What are we looking at for our materials? We've got a D2 sheep's foot blade. We have a crossbar lock. Um, we have a wire deep carry clip and we have micarta scales over steel liners. And then this backspacer I think is G10. Pretty sure it's G10. So there we go. Let's go do some cutting footage. Alrighty guys, today we are doing the review cutting for what I think might be, for me at least, the most underrated knife of 2023. Um, I got this at the very end of the year. It's still 2023 right now. And um, I'm not going to have the review out before the end of the year, but oh my goodness, this knife is good. This is the Best Tech Slasher. In case you're wondering, no, I'm not home yet. Uh, I'm recording this a couple days before Christmas. Um, this is actually not up north in my woods. This is the Lincoln National Forest, uh, just a couple miles north of Cloudcroft. Um, but... Uh, it's beautiful out here, so I figured I'd come and do a little, a little something. So, let's go ahead and talk about this knife. Action! It's a crossbar lock with thumb studs.
the action is phenomenal. I, I love it. It's it's a great, great action, and uh, yeah, couldn't 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 be better. So very good crossbar lock action. How are the ergonomics? Really, really solid. Pretty neutral handle, nice and thick, soft micarta. It swells in all the right places. It's just, gosh, I hold this knife and I'm ready to go to town. I'm ready to get some work done. This thing is very, very comfortable in hand. Um, how's it carry? Well, we have a deep carry wire clip, which is cool to see, and it is reversible. So this is a completely ambidextrous knife. Lefties, rejoice. In and out of the pocket. It's great. It's wonderful. It is a knife that's, I wouldn't say it's a big knife, but it's on the bigger side. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're someone that doesn't like carrying big knives, you might not enjoy this one that much, but I think it carries just fine. I don't really have any problems with it uh, in that department. Look at that guy. Look at that guy. All right, let's go ahead and cut some stuff. So sheep's foot D2 blade, great for your utility cut. Like all low tipped knives are. Oh my goodness. You know, I'm realizing, <laughs> something I've been realizing with all the review cutting I've been doing lately, now that I'm missing, you know, my review cutting board and the table on my truck. This cutting board has a lot of give and this table has a lot of give. And so when I'm doing a lot of the cutting, it's just, it's rough. This is not a great setup, but whatever. I mean, look, I've almost cut through this board, but whatever. There it is. There, there it is. Whatever, right? Whatever. Let's grab a little bit of a longer piece of cardboard. One that I can hold on to a little easier. Let's go ahead. Yeah. Full flat grind on this D2 blade. Slices very, very well. All right, let's go ahead and get our rope out here. I want to say it's like a laser beam slicer, but it slices very, very well. Woo, that went through that really, really nicely. Let's see what we got going on here. One, two, three. Yeah, see, there's so much give and this table is so low. I, I hate it, but that did okay. Um, blades that don't have a whole lot of belly don't typically do well on the rope anyways, so. You know, whatever. And uh, let's go ahead and get our pool noodle out here. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, sweet heavens. Went through very, very easily. Bit really well. That geometry, that geometry is done excellently. So good job, best tech. That's what we like to see. All righty. So there we go. Best tech slasher. Good little performer. Let's go ahead and get back to the table. I completely missed the piece of wood with that one. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the table. Goodness gracious, guys. I can't wait till I have my truck back. Let's get back to the table. Something I've complained about in the past in regard to crossbar locks is ease of use with gloves. So how does the Best Tech Slasher do? I gotta say, he actually does very, very well. These studs do on the crossbar do stick out just a little bit more than some other versions or some other crossbar lock knives. And it makes manipulating the knife very easy. Swing it out with a crossbar lock, swing it closed. Thumb studs are nice and easy to get to. And that's something I really, really appreciate because Sometimes when your dexterity is reduced by gloves, operating locks like this can be a real pain. And that just slows you down a lot when you're trying to get a job done. So I'm glad to see that this knife does not suffer from those issues. And by the way, this thing is so comfortable in the hand with gloves on. This is just a hand filling knife. What a fantastic work knife. What a fantastic work knife. Well guys, how does the best tech slasher work as a ranch knife? I've been using it out here on the ranch the last couple of weeks getting a feel for for it it's a fantastic work knife it's really really fa fantastic this is a great blade shape for all kinds of tasks a sheep's foot blade a little bit of belly um, for cutting hay strings and stuff this does work really well having that low tip kind of gives you a little bit of a claw 
Not as good as the stabbing motion a Tonto gives you, but it's good enough, right? Can't complain. Action's good. Access lock bar is good. I'm actually filming this the day before you guys are gonna see the review. I have gotten so far behind on videos and stuff. It's uh, it's not even funny, but there we go. Best X Slasher. Really, really enjoying it. You know, I'm thinking I chose the wrong time to trim my beard or actually just get rid of it entirely. Why would I do that? I'll tell you why. New Year's Eve, uh, I was going to church with my folks. I decided I was going to trim my beard. I want to try something a little different with it. I made a mistake, so I had to take off pretty much the whole thing. And there for a while, I was trying the goatee. Uh, didn't like that. I was like, you know what? I've done a mustache before. Let's do that again. The mustache and holiday chub do not mix. Alrighty, let's go ahead and talk about what I'm liking and not liking about this knife. Number one, I think this is a good looking knife. It's very attractive. Um, it, it could be, you know, considered a plain looking knife in some cases, but I think it, I think it looks really, really well. It's kind of a soft rectangle, <laughs> in my opinion. We have very angular lines. It's very rectangular in a lot of places, but at the same time, it's kind of softened angles. It is not like sharp or pokey, and especially when it's folded up, you know, you can get kind of that soft rectangle look. Um, next up, the action is actually really, really nice. So I don't think this is, I mean, I know this one is not Best Tech's first crossbar lock. They did the smaller version of the best of the slasher first. Um, but this is the first crossbar lock I have handled from Best Tech and they knocked it out of the park. Um, very, very good thumb stud action. The Omega springs and the lock feel nice and strong, but not overly tight. You can see there we just drop very dangly. We are on bearings. Um, but yeah, just great, great action. And one of the things that helps with that action is these thumb studs are very comfortable. I'm gonna take a look at those thumb studs. Very nice, comfortable thumb studs, pretty plain ones, but they work. And then the studs on the crossbar lock are really, really nice. Uh, they're very, you know, you can see there, they're kind of rounded. And look how much they stick out. You can grab these very, very easily. Lockup is bank vault solid. I mean, holy cow, solid. Um, very strong lockup. The engagement with the crossbar lock on the Tango blade is really, really nice. So, yeah, like that a whole lot. Next thing, ergonomics. Holy cow. So these scales are thick and they are contoured. As we can see right there, the micarta is nice and soft and comfortable in hand. We've got some, you know, detail here, this chamfer on the scales. And this thing just fills the hand really, really well. This little swell and angle back here just nestles you in so nicely. Um, you can choke up into here, I guess, but back here, I still feel like I'm close enough to the edge to get some really good work done. It's just a very comfortable knife, whether you're barehanded or wearing gloves. It just works, and I think that's fantastic. Next up, this is a completely ambidextrous knife. They did give you a reversible clip. Crossbar lock, of course, is ambi. Thumb studs are ambi. They're looking out for the lefties. Love that. That's going to be a great knife for anyone, no matter your hand orientation. And speaking of that clip, this is a really nice clip. Um, I don't have very many knives with wire clips. This is one of the few ones, um, but this is really, really nice. I'm a big fan of this clip. Um, it works on pants of all kinds of thickness. Uh, it climbs over really well. It's got good spring to it. It's short. In the hand, I don't even feel it. It just disappears. This is an excellent, excellent clip. So good job, Best Tech. I want to see more of this. Um, the micarta, by the way, is pretty nice micarta. Uh, like I mentioned, I like the way it feels. I like the blue. It's, you know, soft, but kind of textured at the same time. Good, good stuff. The blade, I love this blade. This is sheep's foot. I know it doesn't have a completely straight edge, but I'm going to call this a sheep's foot. Very, very useful blade shape. You got a tip that's down low. You can get some utility cuts. It's also a very strong blade shape. You got a full flat grind here. This thing isn't the thinnest behind the edge. Let's look at that uh that tip there. Not the thinnest behind the edge, but thin enough and it's got robustness. It's got durability. So this is a knife that you can push to some harder tasks for sure. D2 steel. Um I know some people are probably gonna complain about that. I don't mind D2. Would I have preferred 14C? 
I think so. We'll talk about that, that a little bit later, but the D2 has been performing fine for me, and I haven't really had much issues with Best Tech's, Best Tech's D2 in the past. Also, Sharpening Choil, Plunge Grind. Let's take a look there. They did it pretty well. Focus. So you can sharpen all the way up to there. Could have been better if they like brought just all the way back here, but I'm not going to complain. You got lots and lots of sharpenings there. So this is a knife that really is made... Um, to just work. And that's that's really, really cool. Another thing that's interesting is the only T6 hardware on this thing is this one screw here. I wish they'd just gone ahead and made that a T8, but they didn't, so, you know, whatever. And a uh, nice big stop pin. Look at that. That's a beefy, beefy stop pin. So this knife is just, it's built to be a workhorse, and it is a workhorse. This thing is fantastic. I don't have any thing to complain about and as far as the use goes really at all. So let's go ahead and talk about some of my complaints. Number one, yeah, the Best Tech branding on blades is a little bit annoying. I don't typically care that much, um, but I know some people really do. So I'm going to point that out. You know, they could make that smaller or they've already got their, you know, kind of proprietary pivot thing, you know, this pivot design that could be enough, but no, whatever. I do like they, they don't put the model number on the blade. They just have D2 on this side. So, you know, maybe just shrink that up. Or instead of saying like best technology, just have the logo blazed somewhere. I don't know. They could do that. Um, Next thing, I kind of mentioned that one T6 screw. Eh, whatever. Right? <laughs> it's not a huge deal. I do wish this jimping was a little bit... I kind of wish it came out all the way to here. Um, where it is isn't bad, but I wish it was grippier. If we look here at the Paladin, this knife has like perfect jimping. That file-like, very fine, very grabby jimping. This knife has what I would consider to be perfect jimping. Really, really nice. Wish this knife had jimping more like that. This is kind of smoothed over and stuff, but it's not a huge deal. Um, next up, let's talk about that D2. I personally don't mind D2. But this is a $65 knife. I think it would have been cool to see 14C. I think they should have done 14C. Um, and that kind of would have worked with this type of knife anyways. 14C is a very tough steel. It's a stainless steel. Um, in my mind, 14C is a no-brainer steel for your you know, work knives, a knife that you're going to push to the limit. So kind of would like to, like to see that here, but personally, I'm not too bothered um, by the D2. And that's about it. Let's go ahead and go on to my final conclusion. So, final conclusions. I love this thing. When the first slasher came out, the smaller size, which I still want to get and review on the channel, um, I was very interested in it. I liked, I was very attracted to the overall shape and design, but there was a couple things that I could tell I wasn't going to like. For one, the pocket clip, it wasn't reversible and it was located in a weird spot. I could tell from pictures I wasn't really going to like that, so I just kind of pushed it, put it off, put it off, put it off. Then they, I heard that they were releasing a bigger one. I was like, oh, well, that's more my size, that's more my style, maybe I'll grab that. And then I saw that they fixed the clip, they made it reversible, and I was like, okay, I definitely got to try this. I wish I had tried this knife sooner. Um, if I, ha I got this towards the end of 2023. If I got this earlier in the year, there's a strong possibility that this might have been my budget knife of the year. I and mean, this thing is fantastic. This thing is really, really fantastic. Um, as it was, I gave Best Buy of the Year to the um, CGRB Pyrite, and I, I do still think I, I stand by that, but man, this is a close second. Um, again, if this was in 14C, it might have it pushed the Pyrite out. As it is, this is one of my favorite knives from Best Tech, and this is one of my favorite work knives. I was been using this on the ranch. I took this out in the field with me a, a couple times down to some mines and stuff. This thing is just excellent. It's really, really good. I'm, I, I got a pat best tech on the back and shake their hand and say, congratulations guys. You made one heck of a budget work knife. This thing is absolutely good to go. If you're interested, I cannot recommend it enough. Absolutely. Absolutely love this knife. One of the, I, we're starting off 2024 with a great, great start. This is this is a wonderful knife. Um, Best Tech, congratulations. You have blown me away. This thing is awesome. And 
I'm, <laughs> I like crossbar locks again, which is really, really cool. So there we go. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.